Today, we're visiting a truly bizarre university. Keep your eyes wide open and don't trust anyone. Yeah. Look at these people. One of them is not a student. Can you figure out who it is? This lady in black is a supernatural creature. Look at the mirror. Both she and her reflection are facing you. It's not possible in the real world. Students at this university aren't exactly known for their honesty. Look, it's midterms and someone is cheating during an exam. Can you help the professor find this dishonest student? It's this guy. He has answers written on his arm. Thanks to your help, the professor has caught the cheating student. But she's a kind-hearted woman and gives the guy another chance. He needs to solve this riddle to pass the exam. Would you maybe like to help the poor student you've exposed? Keep in mind that this riddle has challenged many intelligent minds. And for good reason. The missing number in the third circle is 225. The numbers in these circles seem to be completely random at first glance. But let's perform some basic arithmetic operations, addition, subtraction, and multiplication, and try to figure out the pattern. We need to follow these steps. Look at the first circle and pair the opposites. The first pair gives us 11. As for the second pair, we need to calculate the difference between the numbers. It's 9. The next step should be finding the difference between the two results and squaring this number. We get 4. Let's do the same for the second circle to make sure that this is a working scheme. And now, let's find the missing number. So, 225 is the answer. The exams are over and students are celebrating. But the party is kinda shady. Look around. Someone who doesn't belong to this college has sneaked inside. Can you spot the intruder? Look at this young lady. Her feet don't seem to be touching the ground. She must be a ghost. During the holidays, supernatural beings occupied the college, and now they're haunting the students. Even worse, someone has bitten your friend. Which of these people is a vampire? This young man has a t-shirt that looks as if it has some blood stains on it. But that's just a print. This woman has a whole garlic knob hanging as a necklace on her chest, so she's not a vampire. But look at the man who's drinking some red liquid. I bet it's not fruit juice. He's actually the one we should be aware of. Imagine coming back to your dorm and finding out that your roommate is missing. Plus, everything around you looks kinda suspicious. Strange sounds, weird smells. Is your roommate hiding some terrible secret? Let's look at the sky. See that full moon? Now, pay attention to the walls and the floor of your room. You can notice scratch marks and chunks of fur here and there. That's the answer. Your roommate is a werewolf. After figuring out your roommate's secret, you realize you need to clear your head. You go to a morning uh -oh. pool party. People are swimming, playing around, and having fun. But one of the guests is a mermaid. Can you figure out who it is? This girl just pretends to be a mermaid. She even has matching makeup. This guy is wearing special gloves with membranes between the fingers. 
The mermaid is actually this girl who's staying as far away from the swimming pool as possible. She's even wearing a raincoat. All because if even a small water droplet touches her skin, she will get her tail. It's time to go back to school, only to find out that one of your professors is possessed. Who is that? This man has red eyes and messy hair, but that's most likely because he's sleep deprived. This woman is unnaturally pale, but she's suffering from food poisoning. Look at that piece of pizza next to her. It sure doesn't look fresh. At the same time, the guy on the right has two shadows instead of one. He's definitely possessed. Okay, now let's move on to something less supernatural, but no less tricky. Imagine having to empty a jar of milk and a jar of water into a bowl. But of course, there are several conditions. You must be able to see the border between the milk and the water. You must be able to separate the milk from the water. And finally, you aren't allowed to use any kinds of dividers to keep these two liquids apart. How can you do it? All you need to do is to pour the water into the bowl first and freeze it. Now all that's left to do is to add the milk. In the city where people are keen on brain teasers and riddles, 4% of people don't list their phone numbers. So if we select 40 random people from the phone directory, how many of them will have unlisted numbers? The answer is 0%. You see, if the numbers of these 40 people are in the phone directory, they are already listed by default. David invited seven friends to his birthday party. They brought a beautiful big cake, but they couldn't eat it unless it was divided into eight equal pieces with just three cuts. Luckily, they managed to do this and could enjoy the treat. Would you be able to do the same? To fulfill this task correctly, you need to follow the next steps. First of all, cut the cake across the diameter through the middle point. After that, cut the cake horizontally. Now you already have four equal pieces. And finally, cut the cake across the diameter, perpendicular to the first cut. There you go, eight equal pieces and just three cuts. Now, look at the poor guy. One of his friends has pulled a paint bucket prank on him. Look at the rest of the people attentively and try to figure out who it was. It was definitely Luke. Look at his pants. There are paint stains there. Now, look at these girls. They're in a dark basement tied with ropes. Who is going to be the first to escape? Most likely, it'll be the first girl. She's got long, beautiful nails. She's bound to have a file to look after them. It can help her cut through the rope. There's been a robbery on the train. And one of these people is hiding the stolen goods. Who can it be? It's this woman. She only pretends to be pregnant. Her belly has a bizarre shape. It's suspiciously square. The police had been looking for Kyle for two days. The guy went hiking and never came back. Finally, he was found. Someone had hit him on the head and left him lying in the bushes. Kyle only managed to say, friend, and lost consciousness. The police officers had three suspects, all of them Kyle's friends. Zachary said he spent these last days at work getting ready for a conference. 
Jeremy told the detectives he'd sprained his ankle and had been in bed for four days. And Billy explained that he'd been to New York. The man even showed the police officers his boarding pass. Who's responsible for the accident with Kyle? Billy showed the police just one boarding pass from Chicago to New York. Then how did he get back from New York? His story sounds fishy. Jordan was very late for a job interview, but when he drove up to the office building, he found out there were no free parking spaces. He decided to leave his car a bit farther from the entrance. But even though there were several other vehicles in that area, parking was prohibited there. Luckily, Jordan came up with an idea and didn't get fined. What did he do? He took a parking ticket from another car and put it on his windshield. It looked as if he had already been fined. I feel your brain needs some nice tricky workout. I've got just the thing. Are you ready? Yeah. It was raining heavily in the evening. Lauren told her young daughters to go to bed. Sometime later, she went to check on them. As soon as she opened the door to their room, she realized that one of them had sneaked out and returned without her permission. Look at the room and try to figure out which girl it was. It was the girl on the left. Look, both pairs of sneakers are in their place, but the ones on the left are covered with dirt. Alexa has been running at the stadium every day for several months, preparing for upcoming athletic competitions. And they start today. Alexa is warming up when she notices a skinny guy among other runners. His legs look thin and seem to be weak. Alexa feels skeptical about his running abilities. Anyway, they get into the starting position. Three, two, one, go! Alexa is running as fast as she can. Suddenly she notices that the guy she paid attention to earlier is running much faster than her, and he doesn't even look tired. Eventually, he wins. But how did he do it? He's not a real athlete. In fact, he isn't even a human. He doesn't sweat, he doesn't blink, and he has two left hands. Yikes. A guy bought a fishing pole that was six feet three inches long. When he wanted to get on the bus with this fishing pole, the driver stopped him. The man told the guy that he couldn't take anything longer than six feet onto the bus. The guy went back into town and bought one more thing, and the driver allowed him on the bus. What did the guy buy, and what did he do with it? The guy bought a six-fifth long box. He put the fishing pole in it diagonally, and the entire package turned out to be only six feet long. Julia was angry with her boyfriend. She sent a message to her best friend who lived abroad. In this message, the girl complained about the mistakes the guy had made. But her friend sent her a very strange reply. Give, get, give, get, give, get, give, get. What did Julia's friend mean? She wanted to say that Julia should forgive and forget. Gemma was a mermaid living in the Pacific Ocean. One day she was swimming near the surface when she spotted two handsome guys. Both of them seemed to be in trouble. Look at them attentively and try to figure out who Gemma should save first. This wooden boat is indeed filled with water but it's still okay, and the guy inside can scoop this water out. But this guy's inflatable boat is damaged. He will soon find himself in the water, and this shark will be all too happy to snack on him. He needs Gemma's help urgently. One hotel guest discovered her diamond necklace and earrings were missing after a party in the lobby. Someone must have stolen her jewelry. 
the hotel management invited a detective. After questioning all guests and staff members, the detective had three suspects. Walter, another hotel guest, Alice, a maid, and Alan, a porter. The detective decided to check their rooms. What he saw was enough for him to understand who the thief was. Can you figure it out too? It's Alice. There's an already packed suitcase in her room. She's about to run away with the stolen jewelry. Galaxy Detective Varamcha was on a case. A spaceship was lost. Her partner, Galaxy Junior Detective Brightbulb, gave her a piece of paper. It was the location of the spaceship. This is what the slip had scribbled on it. Juice, umbrella, potato, ice, tomato, elephant, rice. Where do you think the spaceship is? Right, it's on Jupiter. You just need to pay attention to the first letters of these words. Look at these girls. It seems to be a tough competition. But guess what? One of these girls is cheating. Can you figure out who it is? It's the girl on the left. Strangely, she doesn't look tired. Ah, do you see that USB port in her neck? She's a robot. Someone stole the money Adam kept in his safe. After watching the security footage, oh the police God. figured out that it had happened at midnight. They questioned three suspects. Julia said she'd gone to bed at 10 p.m. and fallen asleep right away. Parker told the detective he'd been watching TV from 11.45 p.m. to 1 a.m. And Aiden said he'd been with his friends, playing computer games all night. The police arrested the thief. Who was it? It was Parker. He was suspiciously specific about the time. Elijah went on a cruise. On the third day, he noticed that one of the staff members was an imposter. Look at them attentively and try to guess who it is. This waitress is actually hiding a police badge under her floral garland. She must be undercover. Samantha needed to check something online, but her phone's battery was flat. She grabbed her brother's device, but it was password protected. Suddenly, a hint appeared on the screen. While I am in the air, I am not in oxygen. I am also in water, but not in hydrogen. I am necessary for all animals, but you won't find me in a zoo. Look in all brains, and you'll find me there too. Can you figure out the password? It's the letter A. Dora went to study for her exam in a coffee shop. She ordered some tea with milk, opened her laptop, and started working. At one point, she went to the bathroom. When she returned, her oh, laptop hi. wouldn't switch on and her cup was empty. Someone had spilled the tea on her computer, causing it to crash. Dora called the manager and told him what had happened. They came up with three suspects. The barista said he had been extremely busy and hadn't seen anything. The supervisor said he was sorry the milk tea had spilled on the computer. He also promised to check if the insurance would cover the cost. The second barista was also sorry about her milk tea damaging the computer. He offered Dora to make her another cup while they were waiting for the police to arrive. The manager immediately understood who had ruined Dora's laptop. Have you figured it out? It was the supervisor. He couldn't have known the tea had milk in it. As for the second barista, he knew about the milk because he was the one to prepare Dora's order. Caroline went for a walk in the park. Deep in her thoughts, the girl wasn't really looking where she was going. That's why she didn't notice a deep pit in the ground and fell into it. When she came round, she found herself in a strange room. There were no windows, no door. The girl saw a table with three apples on it. And was it a note? To get out of this trap, you've got to eat an apple, but only one of them isn't poisoned. Pick carefully. 
Caroline was terrified. But after examining the apples, she bravely bit into one of them. And nothing bad happened. Which apple did she choose? The girl chose the apple with a worm peeking out of it. If it could eat the fruit, a human probably could too. Detective Adam Bonders worked undercover at a luxurious yeah. resort. The police suspected that the hotel owners were involved in some shady deals. Adam's main task was to sneak into the manager's office and check the documents. But the door was locked, and there was a combination lock. Uh -oh. Adam had to figure out the password. The detective knew he needed to solve a math riddle, and the answer would be the code. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 1 plus 1 times 0 plus 1 equals. As soon as he punched in the code, the door opened. What was the correct number? It's 30. There are no mathematical symbols at the end of the first and second lines. It means the whole thing looks like this. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 11 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 11 plus 1 times 0 plus 1 equals 30. Hey, Brightsiders! How about giving your sharp mind a shake? Then put on your detective hat and listen yeah. attentively. One day, Johnson woke up and immediately felt that something was wrong. While sleeping, he somehow turned into a metal robot. Johnson looked around. The place where he woke up seemed to be a dungeon. Dark, damp, and very cold. There were three corridors leading out of that place. The first passage had a treacherous floor. Some of its panels could collapse, sending people into an abyss. Massive boulders fell from the ceiling of the second corridor every 30 seconds. And the third passage was filled with giant cacti whose thorns were covered in poison. Uh -oh. Which corridor is the safest? Johnson picked the third corridor. Thorns would do no harm to his now metal body, even the ones covered in poison. Mila was locked in a jail cell. It was rather small, with a dirt floor and a small window high above the ground. The only thing she saw was a tiny shovel in the corner. In a couple of hours, Mila managed to break free from the cell. How did she do it? She dug a hole in the floor. Then she made a pile using the soil, climbed on top of it, and escaped through the window. A student failed an important exam, but the professor decided to give him another chance. She said, If you crack my riddle, I'll let you take the exam again. 2 plus 2 is the same as 2 times 2. Find a set of 3 whole numbers whose sum will be the same as their total when multiplied. The student didn't need much time to figure out the answer. These numbers are 1, 2, and 3. One guy decided to become a scuba diver, but during his first dive, he got dazed and disoriented. He couldn't figure out which way he should swim to get to the surface. Soon, he also noticed he was running out of air. He started panicking. Can you help the poor guy find his way to the surface? He should swim in the directions where bubbles go. Yay! You've saved him. Great job! A unique diamond was on exhibition in a famous museum. It was guarded at all times, and only a small group of 10 people were allowed to enter the room. After one of such groups had left, an alarm went off. The guards ran into the room and found a young man there. When they searched him, they found nothing extraordinary. Just several bills, a lighter, a bottle of soda, a camera, and a smartphone. 
the guards had to let the man go. But the next morning, it was announced that the diamond had been stolen. How did it happen? The man replaced the real diamond with a fake one and hid the real treasure in his bottle of soda. Emma came to the office on Monday and found out that someone had deleted an important report from her computer. She knew that in the company there were three people who would be happy if she lost her job. She decided to question the suspects. Laura, Emma's colleague, said, I've just arrived. The weather is awful. Such a downpour. Thomas, the accountant, answered, I was out buying coffee and have just returned. And Eliza, a new employee, said, I had a meeting with a client in a cafe. I've just come back to the office. Who has anything to do with Emma's report? Eliza, pay attention to the suspect's feet. Thomas and Laura's shoes are wet. They got caught in the rain. But Eliza's high heels are perfectly dry. She must have lied about going out to meet with a client. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room. There's only a mattress to sleep on, some food, a small knife, a water dispenser, and a large water bottle. It's enough for you to survive for two days. There are three doors in the room. The corridor behind the first one is filled with toxic gas. Behind the second door, the hall is swarming with venomous snakes. And if you opt for the third door, you'll find yourself in a giant aquarium with hungry sharks. Which door should you choose? Empty the water dispenser and cut its top part with the help of the knife. Then put it over your head so that no air can get inside. Then leave fast enough through the first door. Imagine finding yourself in a room with four doors and a deep pit in the middle. Behind the first door, there's a ferocious tiger. The space behind the second door is filled with bubbling lava. The third door prevents poisonous gas from leaking into the room. And the fourth door leads to a tiny storage room with no windows. Uh -oh. You have to decide fast how to get out of this trap. You should open the first door. When the tiger jumps at you, you should step aside. The animal will fall into the pit and you will be able to escape through the first room. Look at poor Amanda. She dozed off during a lecture and when she woke up, she discovered someone had ruined her hair. Can you figure out who did it? The culprit is the guy on the right. Look, there are scissors sticking out of his pocket. Mickey woke up in a small room without windows. She didn't know how she got there. The girl noticed a door with a combination lock on it. And on the floor next to her, there was a note. Spelled forward were those rodents that terrify you. But what you need is spelled backward. You can't touch it, but you see it at night. What is the password? The rodents the note speaks about are rats. Then the word Mickey needs is star. Now this riddle might seem kind of cruel, but try not to take it seriously and think outside the box. So what happens to a person whose whole left side gets cut off? They're all right now. <laughs> Told you it wasn't too bad. Jack reached the final of a popular game show. Now, if he wanted to get his prize, he had to pass the last challenge. He entered a large hall with three cardboard boxes in the center. One of them had white balls inside. The second contained black balls, and the third was filled with black and white balls. The boxes were sealed and labeled, but all the labels were wrong. 
Jack was allowed to open one box, pick a ball, check its color, and put the uh -oh. ball back into the box. How many times would the man have to repeat this action to label all the boxes correctly? Jack managed to do it after picking just one ball. He chose the box labeled BW, which stood for black and white. Since all labels were wrong, it could be either BB or WW. He pulled out a black ball, so the box was actually BB. Then, logically, Jack figured out the rest of the boxes. Now let's check how attentive you are. Three guys were playing hide and seek. One of them hid in the kitchen. Can you help his friends find him? Yep, I don't know how he did it, but he managed to squeeze into the oven. Now, I've got a tricky but fun yeah. task for you. I'll be showing you different emoji combinations and you'll need to figure out what Disney movies they stand for. Let's start with these emojis. What movie is hidden here? Right, it's 101 Dalmatians. The next one for you. That's The Little Mermaid. How about this very popular one? I believe these days there's no person who doesn't know about Frozen. And the last one for you. I admit, this one might have been a bit tough. Have you recognized Wally? The owner of the restaurant, Vegan Paradise, called the police. Someone has attacked our chef! He was taken to a hospital several minutes ago. My rivals must have sent someone to ruin my business! When police officers came to the restaurant, they found out that three people had been in the staff area during the accident. The first cook was cutting onions when the chef was hurt. He told the police that tears had blurred his vision and he hadn't seen anything. The second cook was peeling shrimps when the accident happened. He said that he had been listening to music through his earphones. And he hadn't heard anything. The third person, a waitress, claimed she had been serving lemonade outside. Who's lying? The second cook attacked the chef. There can't be shrimps in a vegan restaurant. Eric was having lunch in a cafe. At one point, he went to the bathroom and left his smartphone on the table. When he came back, the phone was missing. Eric saw a man leaving the place and ran after him. Eric stopped him when the man was about to sit in a car and asked him to return the gadget. But the man claimed to know nothing about the phone. He said that he had just given his friends a lift to work and he pointed at two men entering an office building. After hearing this, Eric immediately called the police. Why? The man lied. His car is a sports convertible with just two seats. It can't fit three men. The police got a call from the house of a wealthy man who didn't come back after going for a jog. When several officers arrived, they questioned the maid, the millionaire's wife, and his driver. The maid said, When Mr. Jones went for a jog, he asked me to prepare his breakfast, and I immediately got down to work. But it's been three hours, and he hasn't returned yet. The wife was worried too. I saw him in the morning, but he was in a hurry. We just greeted each other, and I went to work. The driver told the police he'd been waiting for his boss in the car, looking through his social media. Who knows something about the millionaire's disappearance? The Maid's Lying 
If she had cut the apples for breakfast three hours ago, they would have turned brown by now. Now, look at poor Dwight. Someone has pulled a paint bucket prank on him. Look at his colleagues and try to figure out who it was. It was definitely Jim. Look at his pants. There are paint stains there. Now, look at these girls. Who's going to be the first to escape? It's going to be the first girl. She's got long, beautiful nails. She's bound to have a file to look after them. It can help her cut the rope. One of these people on the train is hiding some treasure. Who can it be? It's this woman. She pretends to be pregnant, but her belly is suspiciously square. Look at these two girls. Who will be the first to escape? The one on the right, she hasn't touched her food because she uses her spoon to dig a tunnel. The girl on the right has managed to escape, but the tunnel splits into two smaller ones. One is swarming with snakes, and in the other, a fire is raging. What should she do? She should dig another tunnel above these two. She's got her spoon after all. David was a famous antique dealer in his town, but there were loads of people who envied him. The man had a beautiful young daughter called Liza. One evening, when the antiquarian was busy in his workshop, his phone rang. A man told him that they had David's daughter. If he wanted to see her again, he had to give his jewelry collection to the man waiting at the doors. David requested to talk to his daughter. He asked her just one question. I have two hands, but I can't scratch myself. What am I? When David heard no answer, he said, It's not my daughter, and hung up. What's the answer to this riddle? Liza would know that her father was talking about a clock. It took nine years to build the world's tallest skyscraper. Every next year, the builders managed to double its height. How many years did it take the skyscraper to reach half of its maximum height? Eight years. If the constructors doubled the building's height every year, the skyscraper was half of its final height a year before it was completed. Divide 30 by 1 half and add 10. What will you get? The correct answer is 70. Most people divide 30 by 2, add 10, and get 25. But when you divide a number by a fraction, you should actually multiply it by the denominator, which is the number below the line. This way, 30 times 2 plus 10 equals 70. You find yourself in the middle of a forest with three paths in front of you. The first one is covered with burning hot coals. The second path is so cold that it feels like Antarctica right under your feet. And the third path is covered with sharp nails. Which path uh -oh. should you choose? The second path. All that ice is bound to be gone soon. It's too close to the hot coals. The police were looking for Kyle for two days. The guy went hiking and never came back. Finally, he was found. Someone had hit him on the head and left him lying in the bushes. Kyle only managed to say, friend, and lost consciousness. The police officers had three suspects, all of them Kyle's friends. Zachary said he'd spent these last days at work, getting ready for a conference. 
Jeremy told the detectives he sprained his ankle and had been in bed for four days. And Billy explained he'd been to New York for business. He even showed the police officers his boarding pass. Who's responsible for the accident with Kyle? Billy showed the police just one boarding pass. Then how did he get back from New York? His story sounds fishy. Jordan was very late for a job interview, but when he drove up to the office building, he found out there were no free parking spaces. He decided to leave his car a bit further from the entrance. Oh no, even though there were several other vehicles in that area, parking was prohibited there. Luckily, Jordan came up with an idea and didn't get fined. What did he do? He took a parking ticket from another car and put it on his windshield. It looked as if he'd already been fined. Hey, I didn't say it was an honest solution. That day, famous chef Logan was going to have some very important guests in his restaurant. He was anxious because his future depended on how they would appreciate his food. Everything had to be perfect. There was only one hour left before the guests were supposed to arrive. And that's when Logan discovered someone had left ugly red handprints on his sparkling white jacket. He examined the stains. It was ketchup. Logan knew that some of the cooks didn't like him. Look at them and try to help the chef figure out who's guilty. There's a pair of gloves stained with something red in the trash can. The only person who isn't wearing any gloves is the cook on the left. He was the one to spoil Logan's uniform. Linda was in a cafe with her boyfriend and their date wasn't going very well. At one point, they both got angry and started to argue. Suddenly, their waiter came up to the table and handed something to Linda. It was a note with a strangely written word. Lowercase t, uppercase r, lowercase o, uppercase u, lowercase b, lowercase l, lowercase e. Trouble? Linda was confused. What could it mean? Can you figure it out? It's a rebus puzzle. The waiter got worried and asked Linda, are you in trouble? Ashley is a stewardess. She finds this cute puppy running around in the airport. Three people come over and claim to be its owner. Can you guess who's telling the truth? This guy, his tattoo matches the dog's name. Ashley walks to her flight gate and passes by this waiting area. But then the gate changes, so she has to walk through that place once again. Ashley spots 10 differences. Can you see them too? Here they are. Ashley is checking passengers' passports before letting people on board. Suddenly, the security service calls her with a warning. One of the passengers is using a fake ID. Ashley finds three suspects. Can you spot the fake passport out? There's no February 31st, so this passport is definitely fake. Finally, the plane is taking off. Ashley takes a look at the passengers and spots three odd things. Can you see them too? This lady has two safety belts. This guy is talking on the phone. It should be put in airplane mode. And the view behind this window doesn't match reality. There's no hot lunch on this flight, but you can buy it additionally. The price for chicken is set at $15, and the beef costs $12. Can you guess the price of a fish lunch?
The cost of one vowel is five dollars, and the cost of a consonant, one dollar. Fish has three consonants and one vowel, so it costs eight dollars. One of the passengers, Josh, calls Ashley. He begins to complain. Someone had stolen my phone when I was in the toilet. Ashley questions three people sitting nearby. What happened when Josh was away? Chelsea says, "Sorry, I was watching a movie, so I didn't look around at all." Bobby says, "I was reading a book, but I think I heard the sound of a rustled plastic bag." And Nina says, "I was sleeping. You woke me up with your stupid questions. Who stole the phone?" Nobody. It's still in Jeff's pocket. Ashley checks the business class passengers and spots one witch among them. Can you see her too? This lady is hiding a magic wand. Ashley lands in a foreign country and sends her boyfriend this message. Can you guess what country she's in? Singapore. Ashley goes to her hotel by train. She sees these two billboards on the way. She can't decide if they're identical. Can you spot any differences? In fact, there are five differences. Ashley goes to the local restaurant. There's an open kitchen, and she can see the chef at work. Ashley makes an order and leaves for the ladies' room for a while. When she returns, she spots ten differences in the kitchen. Can you see them too? Here they are. Ashley sees a group of office workers having lunch together. Suddenly, their boss spills hot coffee on his laptop because his palm is stuck to his mug. One of these three co-workers prank their boss. Can you guess who? It's the lady in the middle. She's wearing double-sided tape as a bracelet. Suddenly. One of the guests in the restaurant faints. The manager calls an ambulance. The doctors arrive very quickly and take him to the hospital. The police question witnesses. The cook says this guy didn't order any food. He just asked for a glass of water. The waitress says he looked so gloomy. I decided to cheer him up and served his water in a silver glass. The manager says he called us in advance to reserve a table in the corner. He insisted that I must send him an official invitation. And the cleaner says, "I saw him washing hands in the restroom. I swear he didn't have any reflection." Can you guess what happened here? The guest was a vampire, and he got sick because of the silver. Ashley is visiting the local farmers market. A group of tourists asks her to take their pictures. One of them is not from this planet. Can you guess who? This lady. She's eating a pomegranate with the peel. Ashley wants to chill at this beautiful beach, but she sees a zombie among the guests. Can you spot it too? It's this guy who's reading a book upside down. Ashley goes hiking and gets lost. She finds a sign that shows three possible ways out. Unfortunately, each path hides some danger. There's a toxic marsh that swallows people on the first path. The second path is a hunting place for vampires, and the third path holds thousands of venomous snakes. Which way is more or less safe? Ashley should choose the second path. Vampires only hunt at night.
Ashley, Nellie, Sarah, and Melissa are co-workers and friends. They land in Paris and come to a party together. But at a certain point, they find out that Ashley had disappeared. She was locked in the basement of the music hall. Can you guess who did it? It was Melissa. Pink sequins from her fancy dress lay by the door. Ashley receives this rebus from her boss. Can you guess which country is her next destination? She's going to Belgium. Ashley is packing her bags for the trip. How many emojis can you see here? Here they are! Ashley is having breakfast at the airport. Can you find any emojis in this food? There are three, actually! In the waiting area, Ashley meets her old school friend, Kelly. They go to the local coffee shop to chat. Suddenly, Kelly begins to yell. Please help me! My suitcase is gone! Ashley questions three witnesses. One of the passengers, Paul, says, This is my suitcase. I've already wrapped it in plastic to protect it from scratches. Nina says, I went to the restroom and asked the barista to look after my luggage. And the barista says, I looked after Nina's luggage and I didn't look around. Sorry. Can you figure out the thief? It's Paul. There's a sticker with Kelly's name under the plastic. Ashley enters the plane. There's an imposter among the flight crew. Can you help Ashley find this person? It's this stewardess. Take a look at her uniform. The air company logo is a little different compared to all the others. Ashley lands in Brussels. She walks into the local park and takes two pictures. Can you find 10 differences between them? Here they are! A motorbike rider asks Ashley to take his picture. She takes two. Are they identical? There are three differences, actually. In the hotel, Ashley meets an opera diva, Esmeralda, who's having a world tour. She has visited almost all the countries, and she has finally arrived at the last one. Oh, no. In the morning, a maid finds Esmeralda unconscious in her room. The police arrive and find out that Esmeralda was poisoned. They question the suspects. Esmeralda's husband says, she wanted to be in bed early, so I went to the lobby for the night. Esmeralda's manager says, I was in my room all evening. I was preparing for the concert. And the hotel waitress says, I only brought her juice in the evening. She was fine. The police check fingerprints in the room and find many prints on the glass. Who poisoned Esmeralda? It was the manager. She said she didn't leave the room but there are prints on the glass. In the morning, Ashley is having her next flight, but her taxi breaks on the way. She's stuck at the gas station 50 miles away from the airport. Three drivers stop, offering to give Ashley a ride. Which car would you choose? The first car is stolen. And the third driver is a runaway criminal, so Ashley should choose the second car. Ashley returns home and puts all her cash into her sash as usual. The next evening, she oh returns no. home and realizes that someone had stolen her money. How did she guess?
Ashley's cash was in the globe. Its parts don't match anymore. Somebody opened it when Ashley was out. 